Today we are kicking off our restricted Pokemon guide series with the talk of the town, the most broken Pokemon in the format, public enemy number one. I don't really care what you call this thing. All I know is this Caloric Shadow is absolutely disgusting. If you immediately look at the base stats, this Pokemon is crazy. Now, back in the day, because I've played restricted formats in the past, 180 was kind of considered low because we didn't have the ability to terrestrialize. So we'll get into that in a bit, but 180 and two four times weaknesses, you could abuse that, right? You had ways to take this Pokemon down. Now, what you don't have now is that luxury anymore. You want to take this thing out with Sucker Punch? If they're smart with their Terra types, right? They'll have their Terra type saved. They'll have Terra type Fairy. And all of a sudden, Sucker Punch goes from four times super effective to not being very effective at all. So the ability to switch your Terras and switch your typing on Calyrex is disgusting. You have base 150 speed. You're one of the fastest things in the format. You have base 165 special attack, which is almost unheard of in Pokemon. Like, you don't see these types of stats except on restricted Pokemon, and even then, you still don't see these stats. A lot of them cap out at 150. 165 is disgusting. Today we're going to go over what Calyrex is, pretty much kind of give you guys a rundown on how to utilize it, and then we'll go over a couple example sets that I have pre-built for you guys to try out if you choose on running Calyrex, and I don't see why you wouldn't at this point. This Pokemon is phenomenal right now. Uh, in terms of items, we'll get into that when we talk about the sets, but you basically got a couple options. You got your focus sashes, you know, you have, you have your choice specs, you have your life orbs, right? You're looking to maximize damage output with this Pokemon and you want to keep yourself on the field for as long as possible. And that's where the sash comes in handy because you're not like the fattest Pokemon in the world, but you can definitely stick around on the field for quite a bit of time given how fast you are. Uh, broken ability. Did we mention about the broken ability yet? So basically, because the Pokemon is a fused form of base Calyrex and Spectrier, you basically get both abilities. So you get the ability Unnerve, which prevents opponents from eating berries, which, sign me up, I don't know, I mean, you can't eat a Citrus Berry and I'm two-shotting you with Astro Barrage? Sign me up. And then you also get Grimne, so every time you take a knockout, you get a special attack boost. That, I, I don't know, something about that seems pretty good. I don't know, it's a pretty good Pokemon. It did win Worlds, I believe. And it's kind of disgusting, okay? When you can let this thing go and you can utilize this to the best of its ability, it is disgusting. Strong options here, Astro Barrage, base 120, spread move, base 100% accurate. There, there's not much to say here, guys. You just start spamming. This is your steamroll button, right? The jokes in the community are no thoughts, only Astro Barrage. Just click the button. Okay, you're clicking this button, you're going to get a good chunk of wins, right? It's it's really, really strong, and when you have restricted formats like this, these are the pieces that are the the main point of your team. And, and having a button that's coming off base 165 special attack, hitting both targets 100% of the time, and is base 120 power, I don't know where I have to sign, but I will sign if I could be the only one to use this Pokemon. I don't know what I have to sign, but me being the only one allowed to use this Pokemon would be so busted. But anyways, unfortunately, the best answer to Calyrex Shadow, or one of the best answers to Calyrex Shadow, is other Calyrex Shadow. So, since I'm not the only one allowed to use this, we gotta talk about how to utilize this properly. Um, once again, you go Astro Barrage, and you go Psychic Move. More likely than not, you're probably going to go Expanding Force. Indeedee is a very strong partner. It just allows you to eat those priority moves like the Grassy Glides because you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the Sucker Punch, right? It's just a very strong partner for this Pokemon. And then you give it boosted Expanding Force because of Psychic Terrain. Once again, where do I sign to be the only one to use this Pokemon? There is so many things about Calyrex that are just so, so good, right? You also get access to Draining Kiss, which I know it doesn't seem amazing right now. Or Terra Blast nowadays as well. You can go like Terra Water and try to blow up the Incineroar. I don't know if it actually gets the kill. I haven't done that calc. But that is an option. But I think Draining Kiss, knowing that you're going to go Terra Fairy more often than not on this Pokemon. Especially on the sets that you're just kind of slapping on. Right? Feels really, really good. Now I know what you're saying. Draining Kiss is only base 50 power. But getting a little bit of health back is never a bad thing. Getting... A boost in the Draining Kiss because it is not base 50 power. It is actually going up to base 60 power if you Terra. This was something that was discovered way, way back when Terra, when we were first looking into terrestrialization. But it's so irrelevant that it doesn't really come up too often. But basically, any moves that are under base 60 of the type you Terra into 
automatically become base 60 power once you're once you're of that Terra. So if I don't Terra, it's base 50. But if I Terra Fairy, Draining Kiss becomes base 60 power. Still, not a massive boost, but it makes it serviceable, especially because you're utilizing it to get health back. Now, granted, I don't think it's the best move in the format, but if you go Terra Fairy and let's say you're already at plus two and you go down to Sash, you drain a kiss, you're getting that health back. You're getting a lot of health back. So it's definitely something to consider. Once again, Terra Fairy Terra Blast is another strong, perhaps more consistent, immediate option. But I don't hate that one either. Uh, you get other likes like Pollen Puff, which is really, really good. You can do cool things with Bulldoze. You get some support moves like Snarl, which I think is very, very fun, into the mirror. Um, you get other things like Will-O-Wisp, which being a fast Will-O-Wisp this, this quickly is really, really strong. Once again, there's rooms for these moves to be used. We'll talk about those on the sets, and we might as well not procrastinate any longer. Let's get into set one. And set one, guys, we're going to go basic. And this is going to be Focus Sash. There's not a lot to say about this set. There is really no spread optimization here. You can do a little bit. But focus that, guys, why not just send max max, abuse both your busted stats, and then just have four somewhere else. Like, this is just a spread I would recommend on focus that. You can put a little bit of bulk in, but once again, let's just send damage with this Pokemon. That's what we're here to do. Astro Barrage, best move in the game. Why not click it? I'm gonna send it. Um, expanding Force, this one is gonna depend on how you build out your team. If you've built your team with Indeedee or with a Psychic Terrain Inducer, Run Expanding Force. It's a really strong move. You can take advantage of it. You do a lot of damage that way, right? And if you don't have it, you can probably just go ahead and run either a Psychic, maybe a Draining Kiss, just something along the lines that... Just another move, maybe even a Terra Blast here. But if you go Terra Blast, I wouldn't recommend Nasty Plot. You'd probably want another consistent move. But regardless, right, you have options here. This is going to depend on how you build out your team, but it's fine. Once again, same with Nasty Plot. It's really going to depend on how you build your, build your team up. If you have your team as a way to support Calyrex with a couple redirectors or one redirector, some fake out users, right, you're going to get to scenarios where you can just get to click Nasty Plot and you are going to win games. However, you don't necessarily need this. You could go three attacks and throw, like I said, that Draining Kiss or the Terror Blast here. You could go Giga Drain even. I don't love Giga Drain, but it is kind of funny into Groudons. Um, another option, once again, funny into Groudons. Will-O-Wisp is very, very strong as a support move here. Anything can really go into slot, whether it's a third attack, a support move. Something in this slot is perfectly fine. There's a lot of good things going on in this slot. I think Nasty Plot is very, very consistent. I think Will-O-Wisp is pretty strong as well. I don't really think you need to have Fairy Coverage. I think Astro Barrage Expanding Force is really, really strong on its own. But if you want Fairy Coverage, you can easily either drop Nasty Plot, drop the Expanding Force, right? There's a lot of options you can get, maybe try to Terra Blast. Either way, you have room to play with the moveset. But basically, this is your go-to. I'm going to slap, sla uh, slap a Sash on this horse, get damage off, go crazy, and then come back in later and just keep going more crazy because you didn't die to the one hit that they hit you with, right? Incineroar is going to click knockoff. I'm going to live because I'm sashed. Boom, big damage. Boom, big damage again, right? You're basically going to be getting two attacks off consistently unless they're doubling into you, which is really, really shaky. Now, one thing that I don't like about this is Choice Scarf Urshifu kind of comes around. And when Choice Scarf Urshifu comes around, it does actually have the ability to break through that sash since Surging Strikes hits you three times. Right, so that's a little annoying, and I have fixed that in set two. And set two is going to be choice specs, but once again, you can utilize this spread on focus sash, guys. When I'm giving these spreads in these kinds of videos, especially early format, a lot of them can be used interchangeably. You can say, I like this piece from the set two, maybe move it over to the set one and try it there. But I, what I'm doing is I'm showcasing things separately. Right now, this is a choice specs variant, so in, ha in hand, I actually did end up making it a tad bit bulkier. Once again, I don't think this spread is amazing, but I did hit the calcs that I was looking to hit. 4468 allows me to live adamant 156 choice scarf Terra Water Urshifu, which is really, really strong, right? Because if their answer to Calyrex, and a lot of answers to Calyrex right now are one of the main ones, is that choice scarf Terra Water Urshifu hitting you before you're even capable of attacking. And if you're capable of living that and just launching off an Astro Barrage, that not only swings the game in your favor, but also could just be enough for you to steamroll the game entirely, right? So being able to live that is really, really good. You have the choice spec, so your lack of damage here doesn't really matter. You may want this to be an even number in 202 or 204, right? If you want to play around with it, but that's only because you get the, technically you get 1.5 times boost and then you get a low 
you have to round down when you get the boost. It's not doesn't really matter. Some people, someone's gonna yell at me in the comments for not being optimal, but like I don't think it really matters when you're base 165 attack and it's 203. I don't care if at plus one I'm doing 20. I don't care if I'm hitting 204 or 205. It's it, uh, sorry, 304 or 305 after the specs. It's hitting hard, right? Like, and I think the another move I want to talk about here was pollen puff. You can go Pollen Puff, you can go single target ghost move as well with a Shadow Ball. I think that's something a lot of people don't talk about. Uh, Pollen Puff is cool because if you think they're going to like double protect and you're locked into Pollen Puff, you can heal your partner up, even though you're running a Specs mod, right? You still have the ability to heal something else. But Shadow Ball I don't think is talked about enough. A lot of answers to Kaladex right now are Wide Guard, and having a way around Wide Guard Hey, you may not click it, but they have to consider it now. Wide guard is always a mind game versus Calyrex because the Calyrex player sitting there very clearly is under the uh, under the knowledge that you could very easily click wide guard. But am I going to sit there and say, oh, you have wide guard. I know you have wide guard. I'm just going to click Astro Barrage anyways because you're not going to click it. That's a big mind game. But now you get the added benefit in that mind game where you just have Shadow Ball where they might just think, okay, yeah, wide guard, I'm not going to click here because they're going to click Shadow Ball. Then all of a sudden, boom, Astro Barrage, right? Now, Shadow Ball is very good if they do commit to Wide Guard. You can make that call. You have opportunities to make that play, which I think is very, very strong. And maybe it is pretty consistent, especially on a choice spec set where you don't need Protect. Um, one thing I am going to talk about is Terra Fairy is probably just optimal. You flip the type chart incredibly, incredibly well. Terra fa Fairy types are hard to take down in general in this format and there's not a lot of steel types outside of the restricteds but you have other answers to that you're faster than all the other restricteds you can put on big damage like even a zashian right now if you're running a specs variant you are two shotting zashians right so if you astro barrage fake out the zashian astro barrage and then just astro barrage again it's dead right like if they lead incorrectly into calyrex or you get to a position where they have to switch to try and take a hit calyrex does incredible amounts of damage and it is just the damage output is disgusting you're two shotting basically everything even though steel types the only one that i would really be worried about is like an av king gambit but that's not too prominent in the format right now i wouldn't be too concerned about that one right but i am going to recommend max speed on all of these you could get away with like a modest really really bulky choice specs variant but right now, I don't see a reason not to run max speed. Like I said before, Calyrex Shadow is the talk of the town. It is the main selling point of the format for a lot of players. This is the restricted people are going to want to try. This is the people. This is the restricted people are going to be using. Now, because of that, if I'm running Calyrex, at the moment I slow it down, I all of a sudden just lose to somebody who's running max speed Calyrex, which doesn't feel good. Knowing how common Calyrex is. I want to be that faster Calyrex, or at the very least, worst case scenario, a speed tie. I have no business being any slower than opposing Calyrex, knowing how common it is going to be in the format. Could you maybe get away with it with like a Tailwind? Sure. I'm not going to say don't try it out, but every set I'm going to recommend is going to be max speed right now. I think it is incredibly, incredibly strong, and I think you'd be dumb not to go max speed given how often you're probably going to end up playing a Calyrex mirror and just being the faster horse or having a chance of being the faster horse is really, really strong in that opportunity, in that mirror. Another set, which is kind of the even ground that I didn't actually finish off, but the middle ground between set one and set two, which is that life orb. You still get that immediate damage pressure. You still get the immediate chance to protect if you wanted to keep yourself alive. I did want to feature Terra Ghost on this set. What I tend to do is use set three as like something that I haven't really talked about yet on the other two sets, just to kind of highlight that, right? And Terra Ghost is cool. Once again, you can go Ghost over here if you want to on like any of the other sets, but Ghost is a really cool opportunity here. Just get that extra damage. And I'm saying, instead of playing defensive with this piece, I am just going to send every single little bit of damage that I can think that I can find. And I am going to absolutely launch this. You can do this with choice specs as well and just go burr. Absolutely go ahead and send it. Right, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You also get the ability to Terra Normal, which is something that I haven't really talked about, that I really don't love, but you can go ahead and Terra Normal. I think Terra Normal is cooler on a Choice Specs variant as opposed to a Life Orb variant, but Terra Normal is cool because you are now immune to the Ghost types, so if the opposing Calyrex wants to click Astro Barrage into you, they may want to think twice, right? You still get that those resistances. Right, you still like well, you don't get the resistances, but you still get rid of the weaknesses, like the times four weaknesses, which feel really, really good. You get the immunity to one of them, 
which is really really good. You get neutral to ghost uh, to dark, sorry, which isn't amazing. But the normal type, and I think Terra normal is something to consider when Calyrex is the 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 forefront of the format. Terra normal is something that's really really strong, and it's something you're going to see pop up every now and again on Pokemon. So why not use it on one of the best Pokemon in the format? And actually, the typing wise, it makes sense. And if you really want it to be greedy, I don't recommend this. But if you really want it to be greedy, dare normal Hyper Beam and just absolutely drop a piece. Right? Just absolutely drop a piece because why not? I don't do this, guys. It's not good because then you're a sitting duck the next turn. But it would be very, very funny if you wanted the Terra normal Hyper Beam. Uh, over here on Life Orb. Now, I was looking at a way to optimize the Life Orb intake. Like, I was looking for something that could utilize 179 to optimize the life orb kit. I could not really find it. I'm going to be honest, I didn't spend too much time looking. I did come up with a light with a move that was like about 28, I think it was 116, and this still lived the surging strikes from that 156 adamant choice uh, Terra Water Urshifu, right? But my problem with this is, I mean, granted, Maybe it's not that bad because I still have 198 HP uh, special attack. Maybe, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe, maybe I, uh, maybe I wrote this off a little too early. So this is something you could easily do, right? Because you still have a very good chunk of special attack. You still have a life orb. You still potentially have a choice specs to do massive damage. But in this one, I would recommend life orb here because 179. It's, it's where you get. To, you're taking 17 points of damage each time. Right? Whereas if you go one more up to 36, you are taking 18 points of damage each time. It's a small optimization that really in the long run does not matter. But technically taking less or having more HP and taking the same as I would if I had 175 HP is technically good, right? Because it, it just takes less percentage of my HP each time, which feels really, really good. I mean, it's a very minor optimization but it's something I like to consider when I make spreads especially with something like life orb same thing it's like living it's like putting yourself at an H, at an HP stat that's gonna get you more percentage of your health on the grassy recover on the grassy terrain recovery it's very similar like that it doesn't really matter at the end of the day but a small optimization where you can potentially make it and it could come in handy like the one time this comes in handy it could end up being massive right maybe I'm at 18 HP in the end game right? And I'm only going to take 17 from Life Orb Chip, knock out both Pokemon, and still have a Calyrex, right? Stuff like that is always cool. Now, granted, you could also say, maybe if I was at one more point of HP to begin with, I would only be, I would have been at 19, I would take 18 Chip, right? So is the, is the adjustment minuscule? Absolutely. Do I think it's worth it? Probably not here, right? So I think the 68, 44, whatever I had on the other one is probably a little bit of just a more consistent spread. Now, once again, I played one with leftovers last night on uh, on my stream, and it was like the bulkiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I think it had like way more bulk than this. <laughs> but like I said, Calyrex, talk of the town, guys. It is a really, really broken Pokemon. Astro Barrage Go Burr, it is a really strong piece to just be able to control board states because if you can position this piece into a spot where they either have to switch or they can't afford to switch, you're winning games because Astro Barrage is just going to go absolutely ridiculous. It's really, really strong. Absolutely need to try this Pokemon out, guys. This is basically Calyx. I kind of went a little longer than I wanted to with Calyx. I want to keep these guides around 15 minutes. But Calyrex is so dumb. There's so many options you can do with it. It is one of the best Pokemon in the format. I really wanted to try and highlight as many options as possible with this piece. So if you guys do enjoy these types of videos, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And of course, I really do appreciate it. But with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will catch you all in a future video.